are very merciful, supremely merciful. Uh, Srila Prabhupada was visiting temple in Atlanta in the USA and uh, they have beautiful Gornitai deities there and they worshipped them very gorgeously. So they were singing that song when Srila Prabhupada came there. And Srila Prabhupada, after they sang the song, then Srila Prabhupada explained the song. He gave the purport. So these two lords, Chaitanya and Nityananda, are very, very merciful. Of all the avatars, they're the most merciful because they give a process which is simply joyful. Other forms of the Lord were there and they were, come, they were giving something which was demanding, just like Lord Krishna demanded surrender should surrender to Krishna and uh, Lord Rama came with his bows and arrows and he was killing all the Rakshasas. But Chaitanya and Nityananda, they are giving a process which is very joyful. Of course, what is joyful? That is the Sankirtan. Harinam Sankirtan, it is very joyful. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda were propagating the Yuga Dharma. Kali Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan. Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Pravartan. So, who is better, who is the best to propagate the chanting of the holy name? The, nobody better than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, and Lord Nityananda, who is non-different from Lord Balaram. 
So they give a process which is very joyful and it, from that time on we have been chanting Sankirtan and of course it's very joyful. There was a, a Back to Godhead <coughs> magazine which came out in Srila Prabhupada's time and it was a picture of all the devotees on Sankirtan in Boston. In Boston there's a common, there's a, like a park in the middle of the city, they call it the common, common land. So the devotees would go there and chant. And of course it was early 1970s, the BBT was still there in Boston. They hadn't moved, they hadn't moved to New York, they, later on they moved to Los Angeles, but in the beginning they were in Boston. So all the devotees were, of course they were all young people at that time, there were no old people in our movement at that time, they are all very young. So they were all out there and all the ladies had saris on the same colour because they, we didn't have any cloth from India, nobody went to India and nobody had anything. So we would just buy a big bolt of cloth in the market, in the cloth market in New York or something, Manhattan and give everybody a, a strip of cloth and so all the ladies they had their sari all one colour, I think it was like yellow and all the men they had their, their dhotis, it was also, you know, it was all just some synthetic cloth which they got from the cloth market there in Manhattan. And they were all there with their shaved heads, everybody was shaved up and they were all really effulgent, you know, they were really, really effulgent. And they were out there doing Sankirtan and the picture which they took was very wonderful picture, you could see the effulgence of all the devotees, they were so blissful. And so they showed the picture to Srila Prabhupada and they told Prabhupada, they said, Prabhupada, everyone's so effulgent. And Prabhupada said, yes, he said, that is Sankirtan. He said, with Sankirtan everyone gets a mercy. Hmm? Japa is a very individual thing but with Sankirtan, when we chant together, everyone gets a mercy. Is that the picture? Yeah, that's the picture, right? Like that. That's one of them. You can see the devotees. There was another one where they were a bit more, they weren't so packed in there in that one. <laughs> but that definitely is from that time and those were the people. <laughs> they were there were a bit more space, more area between them because they were out there in the park. So Prabhupada said, This is the machine gun, everyone gets a mercy. So Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nichananda, they came to establish this Yuga Dharma where everyone could get the mercy. So then in the second verse, uh, it, it says, uh, Bajo Bojo Bhai, my dear brothers, just worship Chaitanya and Nityananda, Sudrita Vishwashakori, worship them with firm faith, Vishaya Chadiya, give up the attraction for the Vishaya, Vishaya means the sense objects the demands of the senses to enjoy some sense gratification. So don't give in to the senses. Say rase majiya, taste the nectar of the holy name, Muku, muki bolo hari hari. There's drink the nectar of the holy name. So if you chant the holy name with faith and conviction then your, our mind will not be attracted to sense gratification. People often ask how, we, how I can chant with more concentration because the mind is wandering. Mind, our mind seems to always reflect on so many things. So I tell the devotees that 
we have to chant and hear. The important thing is to hear. Prabhupada would say, use the tongue to chant and the ears to hear. If you listen to the mind, then naturally you'll go some other place. The mind will wander to some other thoughts. So we have to be very careful not to just listen to the mind. We have to neglect the mind. Neglect the mind, that's what we have to do to conquer over the mind. Don't give in to the mind. The mind always wants to dictate. The mind will tell us, oh don't chant. The mind will say, oh don't get up, don't get up early in the morning. The mind will say so many things. We have to neglect the mind. How to neglect? By chanting, by hearing the holy name, by focusing on the mantra. So this way we can uh, and get the real mercy of the holy name. Then the third verse, Deko Aribai Tri Bhuvanina. Just, just look, my brother, that who could be more merciful? Deko Aribai Tri Bhuvanina Emana Dialata. Who could be more merciful in the three worlds? That Pashu Paki Juri Pashu, that he's made the animals chant and dance. This is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he could go into the forest in Jarakant and he could get the wild animals to all chant and dance. A couple of years ago, we went to Jarakant on safari. After the Gaur Purnima, we went traveling and we went to Jarakant. And we went to the forest where Lord Chaitanya had chanted and danced. And one Gaudiya Vaishnava has put up a temple there in the forest, in the jungle there. It's made a temple. And Lord Chaitanya is there. And, and then we were doing, we, the, the devotees were doing dramas. And one of the dramas which we did was Lord Chaitanya in Jarakhand. And our different devotees were dressed up, you know, <laughs> elephants <laughs> and tigers and monkeys, you know. And we had outfits for all the different devotees and they would put on these dresses of different animals. Mm -hmm. The whole stage was full of all these different devotees prancing about, you know. And then we had this very nice devotee, a devotee is from the Philippines actually. He was a dis he's a disciple of Tamal Krishna Goswami, his name Baladev Prabhu. He was Lord Chaitanya and he was very wonderful, he was very majestic, you know, he would, in his saffron cloth, he just, he just like Mahaprabhu. And, and so, you know, it describes, the Chaitanya Charitamrita describes how the tigers would embrace the deer, the ferocious animals became gentle by the touch of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Or Chaitanya would tell him, get up and chant the holy name and the tigers and the elephants and the deer, all the different animals, they all became gentle and they all became ec ec ecstatic and they were embracing each other and even kissing each other in their ecstasy. <laughs> it was so amazing. Uh, so. This is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Jarakanda forest. Jarakand. It's a state now and they made it a separate state. You can go there. All right, and then finally, Samsari Majiya Rohi Lipadiya Sepadi Nahilo Asa Hapana Koramai Bunjai Samana Lochana Das. So Lochana Das Thakur, very great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said that, I'm very unfortunate. He said, although Lord Chaitanya has come to give something so wonderful, so merciful, that I'm, I'm, I'm not able to appreciate it. That I must, he said, I must be pu being punished by Yamaraj. 
I'm not able to appreciate the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is the humility of the Vaishnava, that the, Vai the, uh, the greatly advanced Vaishnavas, they'll be very humble, they'll be very humble. Just like Prahlad Maharaj, when he offers prayers to Lord Nisringadev, he's very, very humble. And you can, we know also every, we, when we greet Panchatattva, we sing that song by Naratama Dasa, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, Daya Koramori, Toma Vinaki Daya Jagatat, Patita Pavana Hetu Tava Avatara, Mosa Mo Patita Prabhu Napai Vyara. That Naratama Dasa Thakur is saying that you have come to deliver the fallen souls. So my claim is first because I'm very fallen. So Naratam, of course, is a great devotee, but he thinks of himself to be very fallen. He's such a great devotee that when he disappeared, he was taking bath in the, in the river Padma and his body turned to milk. And there's a place there on the bank of the river Padma where it happened 500, about 500 years ago. It was after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he was with some disciples and he was taking his bath in the Ganga and his body just started to cut, turn to milk. So that was how he disappeared from the world. He took milk samadhi. Unusual way to leave the world. Eh? So these are the pastimes of the great devotees. We cannot understand the dealings of these wonderful Vaishnavas. We can only hear about them. Okay, so we'll read the Bhagavad Gita a little. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Gopi Jana Bala Chapter 4, 
Text number 40, is it? 19. 19. Oh, text what? 19. Text 19. Om Namo Bhagavate Vatsudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vatsudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So reading from Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 text number 19 Yasya sarve samarambha Yasya sarve samarambha Kama sankhaupa vajita Kama sankhaupa vajita Jnana agni dakta karmanam Jnana agni dakta karmanam Tamma ho panditam buddha Tamma ho panditam buddha Yasya sarve samarambha Yasya sarve samarambha Kama sankhaupa vajita Kama sankhaupa vajita Jnana agni dakta karmanam Jnana agni dakta karmanam Tamma ho panditam bhojha Tamma ho panditam bhojha Yasya sarve samarambha Yasya sarve samarambha Kama sankhaupa vajita Kama sankhaupa vajita Yanagni dakta karmanam Yanagni dakta karmanam Tamma ho panditam buddha Tamma ho panditam buddha Others chant Yasya sarve samarambha Yasya sarve samarambha Sankalpa Vajita, Kama Sankalpa Vajita, Yanagni Dakta Karmanam, Yanagni Dakta Karmanam, Tama Upandi Tambuddha, Tama Upandi Tambuddha, Yasya Sarve Samarambha, Yasya Sarve Samarambha, Kama Sankalpa Vajita, Kama Sankalpa Vajita. Yanagni dagdha karmanam Yanagni dagdha karmanam Tamaku panditam buddha Tamaku panditam buddha Yasya sarve samarambha Yasya sarve samarambha Kama sankalpa vajita Kama sankalpa vajita Yanagni dagdha karmanam Yanagni dagdha karmanam Nama ho panditam buddha Nama ho panditam buddha Yasya sarve samarambha Yasya sarve samarambha Nama sankhapa vajita Nama sankhapa vajita Yanagni dhanda karmanam Yasya, one who, surveys all sorts of samarambha, attempts, kama, based on desire for sense gratification. Sankalpa, determination. Vajita, are devoid of. Jnana, of perfect knowledge. Agni, by the fire. Dagda, burned. Karmanam, whose work. Whose word? Tam, Tam, him, him. Aho, Aho, declare, declare. Panditam, Panditam, learned, learned. Buddha, Buddha, those who know. Those who know. Translation. 
One is understood to be in full knowledge whose every endeavor is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by sages to be a worker for whom the reactions of work have been burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Only a person in full knowledge can understand the activities of a person in Krishna consciousness. Because the person in Krishna consciousness is devoid of all kinds of sense gratificatory propensities, it is to be understood that he has burned up the reactions of his work by perfect knowledge of his constitutional position as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is actually learned who has attained to such perfection of knowledge. Development of this knowledge of eternal servitorship to the Lord is compared to fire. Such a fire once kindled can burn up all kinds of reactions to work. Oma jnana timarandasya jnana shalakaya chaksura militanyena tasmai shri gurave nama shri chaitanya mano bhistam stapitam yena bhutale Swayam rupa kadamayam dadati swapadantikam Bandeyam Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tamsajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamsya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Kaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Lord Krishna is describing to us how to recognize a person who is in full knowledge. At least we should be able to recognize by some of the subtle characteristics which he displays. It's mentioned here by Lord Krishna that one who is in perfect knowledge Every endeavor is devoid of a desire for sense gratification. Desire for sense gratification, it's a subtle thing, it can be subtle. 
the desires may not be manifest in physical activities, but in the mind we may be thinking about material enjoyment. That is the desire for sense gratification. But one who is in perfect knowledge, he won't allow his mind to wander into such thoughts. Because he's conquered the mind because of his full knowledge. So knowledge will help us to conquer over the desire for sinful activities. The more we hear, the more we will become convinced about Krishna consciousness. That is why Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya wanted to preach, wanted to instruct Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Vedanta Sutra. He saw Mahaprabhu as a young man, he thought, oh, it will be very difficult for him to maintain his sannyas ashram. So he thought, I will teach him the Vedanta Sutra. And Balabha, uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was already teaching the Mayavadi Sannyasis Vedanta Sutra. Shankaracharya has an ashram there in Puri. Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya, the original Shankaracharya set up four ashrams, right? Dwarka, Badrik Ashram, Puri and Shingiri. In the south there's a place called Shingiri. So even today they're quite active there. They have regular, you know, they, they teach Sanskrit and the pandits come there and they, they train the pandits, they train the people. The young, bo young men also come, they learn the teachings of Shankaracharya. And this way they later on they go to a temple, become the priest in the temple, do the pujas, take care of the pujas. They've got the knowledge, they've heard the scriptures. That is why every day we hear Srimad Bhagavatam in our morning program. We have the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the evening program we hear Bhagavad Gita. We want to hear, we need to hear again and again this knowledge about the nature of the material world and about the nature of the living entity and how we are conditioned by the material energy and how we can conquer over that condi conditioning by cultivating knowledge. Cultivating knowledge, not just any ordinary knowledge, but knowledge of transcendence. We have to hear from the scriptures and then we can conquer over the desire for sense gratification, desires for sense gratification. We have the example about Yamunacharya, the great devotee in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. He was initially, he was a, a king and he was residing in a palace and he was enjoying all kinds of luxury and sense gratification. But later on he renounced everything and he became uh, like a full-time devotee. He became in charge of the Sri, Ranga, Sri Ranganath temple in South India, in Trichy. Right? Have you been to Trichy? Did you go there? Tamil Nadu. You have all the Tamil people come here, right? Maybe some of them come from there, from Trichy. Trichy is a, the main city, just, it's just a few kilometers away from the temple of Lord Rangana. So Yamunacharya was in charge of it before Ramanujacharya. So Yamunacharya, he composed that verse which is in the purport in the Bhagavad Gita where Prabhupada is talking about sense gratification. And Yamunacharya describes Yadavadim mama cheta krishna padara vende nava nava rasa tamanyata rantamahasi. He said that since I have been engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, then whenever I think of sense gratification, then my lips tur turn with distaste and I spit at the thought. So that was the 
the transformation which came about in Yamanacharya. How did, the, how did he change? He had transcendental knowledge. He studied the scriptures, he developed his faith in transcendental knowledge and he lost all desire for sense gratification. That is the power of hearing, right? We, we say Srivatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana that hearing, hearing about Krishna it is in itself a pious activity and just by hearing we can take away the desire for sense gratification. The desire for sense gratification will become insignificant. It's that the example is given in the nectar of devotion it's that the, the desires are like birds which come to eat the seeds. The, when you, you know, when you're gardening, if you have a, a garden, maybe you plant seeds in the garden, the birds may come and eat the seeds. But if you clap your hands, the birds all fly away. So that the, the, the desires for sinful activities, the desires which we have in our mind, they all fly away when we come in front of the deities and clap our hands and take part in the kirtan. Then all the, the, the birds of sinful desires are all removed. So this is the, the power of devotional service, that it conquers over material desires. Of course there are other processes to remove material desires. Mayavadis also, they're also working against material desires, fighting material desires. <laughs> Karma yogis, they're also working against material desires. They want to remove material desires. <coughs> but only bhakti yoga can remove the desire for sinful activity. The, the, it can take away even the desire for sins. Other activities may help people to atone for their sins. They do atonement. Oh, I did something wrong. Okay, uh, I'll do some atonement. Atonement, uh, go and bathe in the holy rivers or fast. Fasting can also, it's a type of atonement. And then uh, some people may also do chanting as an atonement. But that's not the real purpose of chanting. Anyway, people often want to remove the results of their sinful reactions and they will try different methods. But the best atonement, the real atonement is simply Krishna consciousness, devotional <coughs> service. We simply engage in the acts of devotion, then that is the ultimate atonement that will take away all the reactions, all the sins which are there. Only devotional service can remove the desire for sinful reactions. So Lord Krishna is describing here how a person who is in full knowledge, he doesn't have any desire for sinful… How do we… How, now we have to have desire, you cannot stop desire, but we can purify desire. So Prabhupada in the purport explains what is the pure desire that the pure desire is simply, I am the servant of Krishna and we simply desire to be engaged in the service of Krishna. Just like Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in Shikshastika that I don't want wealth, I don't want followers, I don't want fame, I simply want devotional service, birth after birth. So that is the mood of the pure devotee. They simply they want devotional service, birth after birth. They don't even want liberation. Liberation is not important for the devotee because the devotee is already liberated because they are chanting Hare Krishna, because they are worshipping the Lord. So they are already on the liberated platform. They don't have to worry about liberation. Bhagavad Gita said, 
Brahma Buddha Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanchati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakti Mlabhati Param. That one becomes, one takes up devotional service simply by knowing, first of all, that he is Brahma Buddha, that he is not the body, that he is the pure spirit soul. Therefore, it becomes Prasan Atma, joyful soul. Prasanatma, one who is joyful. Prabhupada is one disciple, Prasanatma Prabhu. You, did you know him? Prasanatma? I was just, I was hearing the offerings to Gopal Krishna Goswami and he was there and he, he introduced himself, he said, I'm Prasanatma. I could never recognize him because I knew him many years ago in, in the Prabhupada's time, he was there in Vrindavan. So he was with Gopal Krishna Maharaj at the very beginning and he was describing how he was with Gopal Krishna Maharaj, how they travelled together and the different things which happened to them. Anyway, Prabhupada gave him the name Prasan Atma. One who is one who knows he's not the body, who understands he's not the body, he's Prasan Atma, should be a joyful soul. Prabhupada had one servant, Purushottam, and Prabhupada said to him, Prabhupada could understand he was not in Krishna consciousness. He was Prabhupada's servant, but he was not in Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada told him, he said, if you are morose, then you are not in Krishna consciousness. So, devotee means joyful soul. Not morose. <laughs> you know, if you're morose, you're, you're miserable, you know. You're not very happy, not very joyful. But jo devotee means to a joyful soul is happy in Krishna consciousness. Because thank goodness I'm not the body. If we're the body, oh, then oh, definitely we'll be miserable. Thinking about the body, oh my God, this body is so horrible, such a thing. It gives so much trouble, so much pain, so many miseries. If we had to be the body, if we had to be the body, it was unbearable. So, one who is in transcendental knowledge, they know they're not the body. Brahma Buddha present na sochati na kanchati, but because we're not the body, it doesn't hanker or lament for anything, has no material desires. Because it's not the body, we're not the body, we don't need anything for the body. People who are all hankering and lamenting, it's all in relation to the body. Oh, this happened to me, my body has happened, I, I, I wanted this and I didn't get that and I lost this and oh, hankering and lamenting about the, hank hankering for the future and lamenting about the past. That is the business of body consciousness. We're just thinking of all the things which happened in the past and we're thinking about the things we want to happen in the future. But one who is Krishna conscious, he doesn't hanker or lament. He's, he, does, he, he doesn't care what happened in the past and he's not worried about the future. He's simply here, now. George Harrison wrote a book, I, Me, Mine. <laughs> I, Me, Mine. Uh, and there was this other person who wrote, he said, be here now, right? He said, be here to remember, who was it? Baba, Baba, okay, it's not Maya Bhadi anyway, be here now. My, the Buddhists, they always talk about that, now, the, the, the now, just now, that nothing else is real. Of course, for the Buddhists, nothing is real, everything is an illusion. But they, they like to just focus about the now, the nothing, the, this, this moment, don't worry about anything. So in, in Krishna consciousness we also have that. No hankering, no lamenting. Sama sarveshu bhuteshu. We see everyone equally, we see all the, everyone the same. 
Of course that was there in the fifth chapter, yeah. Vijabhinaya Sampani Brahmani Gavihastini Suni Chaiva Swapaki Cha Samo Pandita Darshana. One who is in knowledge they will see the elephant, the cow, the dog, the dog eater, all the same because they see within everyone the spirit soul. They see the soul within everyone. They don't see the body, they don't identify, they don't discriminate against people on the basis of their body. They see within everyone there's a spirit soul. <coughs> so it's very important for pujaris. The pujaris who are more elevated, they will see Krishna not just on the altar but they will see Krishna in the hearts of all the people also. That's, that, that is the advanced Vaishnava, that they see Krishna everywhere. Just like Prahlad Maharaj when his father is asking him, where is this God you worship? And Prahlad said, he's everywhere, Father. So that, that is the vision of the devotee. The top of the Uttama Adhikari, they see the Lord everywhere. They have, so they have no material desires. And they, because they see the Lord, they want to serve Him, they want to do service. In, in Shantaras, those who are in Shantaras, they appreciate the Lord but they don't do any service. They're attracted by the beauty, oh very, just like four Kumaras, they went to Vaikuntha, they got to the doorway and they met Lord Padmanabha and they were attracted. They smelt the aroma of the tosi leaves from the lotus feet of the Lord and there was a change in their heart. They took, they actually became devotional. They'd heard about the Lord before from their father Brahma but they were more attracted to the impersonal Brahma. But then when they actually saw Lord Padmanabha then they felt the awakening of devotion. But they don't do service. Santaras, Santaras. Nine Yogendras are also like that. They're in Shantaras. So, uh, sometimes people say Prahlad was in Shantaras because Prahlad is only remembering the Lord. In Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Narada Muni is searching for the devotee who got the greatest mercy from the Lord. And at one point he thought it was Prahlad, that Prahlad must be the greatest devotee because the Lord Nishringadev appeared to protect him. And Narada went and he was telling Prahlad, you are the greatest devotee. And Prahlad said, oh please, come on, you know, I'm not a good devotee. And then he, he said, I only remember the Lord, I don't serve Him. You should go to the, those people who serve the Lord, they're the topmost devotees. So like that, uh, people may have knowledge, they appreciate that, but they don't apply that knowledge. There's Gyan and Vigyan. Vigyan is the application of the knowledge. So the people may have a lot of knowledge, they're jnanis, they have a lot of knowledge, but they don't use that knowledge, they don't apply it, they don't put it into practice. So that is something higher. We, we want not only to understand this knowledge but we want to also use it and put it into application, into practice. Seeing Krishna in everyone's heart, we should want to respect them and, 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 and give them the opportunity to also serve Krishna. That Krishna is in their heart, they should be made aware of it. We want to tell everyone, we like to awaken people to Krishna consciousness. Of course it disturbs people, sometimes people <coughs> criticize us. Oh you Hare Krishna people, you're always making so much noise, you're always so, you're, you're always, you always have to be out there <laughs> troubling everyone. 
Yeah, that's our business. <laughs> because everyone's in Maya, everyone's going to hell. But we're trying to save them. Prabhupada gives an example about the man on the roof, he's flying the kite and he's not watching where he's going, he's walking off the end of the roof. And if you grab him and save him from walking off the roof, the man gets angry. What are you doing? Why are you disturbing me? I'm flying my kite. No, you're going to fall off the roof. No, you're disturbing me. So people are like that. They say we are disturbing them when we're trying to give them Krishna consciousness. But anyway, it's our duty. We have to do that. Right? The, uh, the, there, there are social etiquettes, but for preaching there's no social etiquette. <laughs> when it comes to preaching we don't have to follow social etiquette. Social etiquette, that's in society, but we are transcendental to all these things. We have to go, we have to travel. You know, you're not supposed to go and bother people and disturb people, but we have to do it. If we don't do it, then nobody else will save them. So that is Krishna consciousness. We're applying the knowledge, we're using the knowledge in the service of Krishna. We want people to understand. They're not the body, we want to, under, we want to take them beyond that, just understanding they're not the body. We want them to understand their servant of Krishna and how to serve Krishna. That also has to be learned. We have to learn that, learn that from the devotees. Those who know Krishna, they know how to serve Him, how we can please Him. And Lord Krishna also tells us also Himself in the Bhagavad Gita, He's telling us how we can please Him, how we can serve. He said, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam, you can offer these things to me with love and devotion. I will accept them. And all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, all the steady, do it as an offering to me. So sounds like Krishna is happy to get offerings. Of course, <coughs> he gets many offerings. He doesn't need our offerings. He doesn't need our flowers and fruits. He has many goddesses of fortune in the spiritual world all serving him. Why would he want our offerings? But still it's, it's our duty to offer. He doesn't need it. We need to offer to Krishna. Krishna doesn't need our offerings. We need to offer to Krishna. It's for our benefit that we do these things. That we have to be, we have to develop an attachment to Krishna. We have to develop some love for Krishna. We're, we're misdirecting our love to so many other things and we have to develop the love for Krishna. That is the real love. All, well, all the other so-called loves are just illusion. The illusion of love, the illusion of affection for your dog, for your cat, for your country, <laughs> all of these things. We have a lot of love misdirected. But the real meaning of love is to Krishna. So we have to help, we have to educate people in these things. And the more we educate people, the more we get educated ourselves. Just like universities, they say universities are where professors learn their subjects. <laughs> when they teach their subject, then they learn it. <laughs> so the same way, we are also like that, we're teaching devotional service. The more we teach devotional service, the more we learn it ourselves. Okay, is there any question? Anybody? Uh, yes, bro. Uh, thank you so much for for coming. Um, I read in your biography that you took the uh, initiation in 1971. This is very early, and uh, 
do you meet with the devotees, the, the two couples, the Mokunda, Gurdas, uh, Shemasuda, they are in the time? Right? The, when you, you meet with the devotees, what, this was in London, yes? This was in London? In London, yeah. yeah okay. Sorry, my no English. Do you know these three couples, uh, Shemasunda, uh, Mukunda? How you met with the with the movement? Well, I joined in 1971. At that time, they'd already gone to India. Prabhupada took them to India. You see that Prabhupada was beginning his World Sankirtan party, and the only one who was left there when I came was Mukunda. Mm. And he he didn't stay very long. He also he went back to America at one point. Yeah. He went back to his wife. His you know he was married, and his wife had gone back, and he went back to see his wife, and then later on then he came back to England. But Shamsundar and Mahati, <coughs> Guru Das and Yamuna, they'd all gone to India, mm. and Tamal Krishna Maharaj also Prabhupada took. Prabhupada took all the leaders from all from most of America, the different temple presidents. He got them all to go with him to India, and they all thought, "Yeah, we'll go with Prabhupada to India." You know, they thought it would be really exciting, and of course it was. It was very adventurous, but it was very demanding. They were traveling around all the time, and they had no temples. There was nowhere to stay. There were Stand in living in the on the trains, traveling from one place to another. Every day, go out in Harinam in India, in the streets of India. So it was difficult, and, the, the, and because they'd all been managers before they came there, they'd all been managers, and now they were all trying to work together, and they couldn't get along with each other very well, you know, <laughs> because they'd all been managers before, you know. And, now somebody's telling them what to do. <laughs> they didn't really like that too much. And that was when Prabhupada said, every day we have to offer obeisances to each other. Because there were so many conflicts and arguments between the devotees. And they're very young men, passionate, you know, healthy young Western bodies, you know, and, and very passionate. And, they, they, you know, there was a lot of quarreling and arguing, but they did a lot of preaching, and they they got uh, sent some uh, big programs. They did some big pandal programs and things like that in India, and then they they got the house in Calcutta, which is still a temple. We still have it today. In Calcutta, there's a place in Albert Road. We have a, that place there. We were renting it in India. When you rent, then you, they could never get you out. <laughs> if you rent it, they could never tell you to go. And so we were renting it. Eventually, we ended, they sold it to us because we said we're not going. So now we own the place. And we bought the, even after we bought the person out downstairs. Mm. So that was Calcutta, but Delhi, we didn't have anything. But then they got the land in Vrindavan and they started to build the temple in Vrindavan. That was one, one Indian man from London. He joined in London and he also went to India and he was the one who got the land in Vrindavan. And then Guru Das and Yamuna, they built it. They actually took the job of managing the Vrindavan place and getting the temple built. Very difficult to do things in India in, at that time. You know, the, the government controlled everything. Everything was rationed to buy cement and everything was very difficult. Even to buy rice, it was all rationed. Mm -hmm. So, they, they did really good to build the temple. Guru Das and Yamuna did wonderful service. And Malati and Shamsundar, of course, they did also wonderful things. 
Shamsundar. So, so amazing. They're very special people. You know, the three couples, Makunda and they were really empowered. They helped Prabhupada so much. And Prabhupada appreciated them also, that they'd done so much. Although Prabhupada could be very strict and very sometimes get angry, you know, <laughs> but still he understood that these people had sacrificed a lot, they took they did a lot to help Prabhupada begin the movement. So Shamsundar and Mahati, they they were the ones they went to London and they had no money and <laughs> And they didn't know anybody, and, and, but somehow they managed to meet George Harrison. Somehow they got a building on rent. Eventually they closed us down at that building in London. <coughs> and then we took, we managed to get another place. It's always difficult in the beginning. They have a saying like that in Chinese. They say, Wan Shi Kai To Nan. I mean, 10,000 things are difficult in the beginning. So, in the beginning, you know, just like when we come to Krishna consciousness, it's not easy in the beginning to be a devotee, you know. I mean, Prabhupada said it was easy for him, but you know. <laughs> For Prabhupada, okay, Prabhupada's a pure devotee. He was born in the devotee family. But we're coming out of Western society, and it's not so straightforward coming into Krishna consciousness. Many challenges, many obstacles. So, but now many centers have been developed. You you own this property here? Mm. You own it? Yeah. Good. You just have one center? Well, we have a mortgage on it. Oh, you have a mortgage? You still paying? Still paying the mortgage? Oh, really? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of trouble. Pay off the mortgage, yeah. Hmm. You only have one center in Zurich? In Zurich one and then in Langenthal is one hour from here, a small town, we have another temple. Yeah, but another temple. A temple? Yeah, it's a Grihasta community. Mm -hmm. So they bought an old restaurant mm -hmm. building and it's a temple. Oh. And they, they, they bought the building? Um, I think so, but it's, it's not in the name of ISKCON yet. Uh -huh. It's quite a new project. And they have a restaurant as a house? No, they do catering. They do catering. Okay. Many, many householders? How many? Um, they have around 15 families. 15? Yes. Oh, well, nice. And they have a school. They have a school? They have their own school. Yes. Well, in Switzerland, you're allowed to have your own school. Well, it was quite a fight with the government, but then <laughs> eventually they got the permission. You got permission? Yes. Oh, good. How many children? Around 20, I think. It fluctuates a lot, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something. Very nice. Now in India, is it's gone is really booming. There's so many centers there everywhere, and they have also uh, bases. You know, students staying together near a temple. Young men who don't want to become full-time devotees or maybe studying or working, they stay together. They have a morning program. They go to work in the daytime. So they have a lot of those centers. So many centers now in India. 
India is really a success story. You know, success. You see wonderful temples. We hope they will continue. We hope they they will maintain. In the Western countries like here, it's difficult to maintain. I know like in England, the Bhaktivedanta Manor, that if we didn't have the help of the Indian community there, then we would never be able to maintain that Bhaktivedanta Manor. And if George Harrison hadn't purchased it, there's no way we would ever have purchased such a property. It was only Krishna or Prabhupada's potency which inspired George Harrison to purchase that and donate it to the temple. Otherwise it's very difficult. So we have a lot of people helping Krishna sends people. Like in New Mayapur, Jananda Goswami Maharaj told me how they had to make so many alterations in the building there in that building in New Mayapur. The government were going to close them down because the, 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 the alterations which they had to make cost about a million euros. One million euros and they didn't have money um, to do it. And somehow people just started giving donations, you know, they put some things on the internet and from different parts of the world, different people, French people would give donations, they felt they wanted to help. And they were able to do it, they were able to make all the alterations and put in all the fire regulations, keep the building, keep New Mayapur going. So, somehow Krishna arranges. And Prabhupada went to America with no money. <laughs> Krishna says, Yoga Kshema Bahamiyam. And then Prabhupada sent Gorgovinda Gaur to Bhubaneshwar. Bhubaneshwar. At that time also no money and the, the land was a jungle and it was, you know, it seemed away from the city, away from the town. But somehow the whole town just kind of developed around our temple there. Krishna just arranges everything. Okay. So no questions? No, I have a question. Yes. Um, how can how can we conquer the mind? What's the secret? to conquer the mind. It seems so difficult, sometimes it works and then again the mind just overcomes. Well, we give the example, the mind is like a wild animal. How do you train a wild animal? Stick. Hmm? Stick. <laughs> yeah. First of all, first of all you put it, you, you capture it and then you put it in the cage and then you starve it. You don't feed it, you starve it, you let it get really hungry and then you beat it. <laughs> and then the animal knows, I better do what… and then you feed it. After you've beaten it, then you feed it. And then the, in this way the animal knows, I better do what this person said. This person put me in the cage, he starved me. He beat me, now he's feeding me, I better do what he says. This is how you have to deal with the mind. You have to starve the mind. 
The mind wants so many things. Don't give in to the mind. Starve the mind. And then beat the mind. How do you beat the mind? Make it do what it doesn't want to do. Right? The mind doesn't want to sit and chant. The mind doesn't want to go to arti. The mind doesn't want to read the books. You do it. <laughs> because you, this is how you beat the mind. And then gradually the mind understands. I, <laughs> you, the, you, we have to train the mind to be submissive, to be chaste. So you have to do these things. Starve the mind. The mind, what, the, what does the mind? The mind wants to, oh, karmi music. Uh, the mind wants karmi food, you know. The mind wants all kinds of mundane not news and gossip. Just starve the mind. Don't give in. Don't let the mind have these things. Say no. Not giving you. Just starve the mind. And then the, when the mind is trained up, then no problem. So it's just practice. Just like Arjuna said, very difficult to Arjuna saying, Chanchala Himana Krishna, but Lord Krishna said, Asam Shayam Mahabaho Manu Durne Graham Shalom Abhya Sena Chukontiya. Vairagyena chakriyate. I know, uh, Lord Krishna said, I know it's very difficult to control the mind Arjuna, but it is possible. Two things are required, right? Abhyas, practice, and vairag, detachment. If you are holding on to sense gratification, then it's very difficult. Just like Prahlad told his father Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyakashipu was asking Prahlad, where did you get this knowledge from? And Prahlad said, oh, you don't have to worry, father, you'll never get that knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Prahlad was a bit sarcastic, you know, <laughs> to his father. But he said, you, you, won't, you won't be born, you, it won't come to you. Why? Because you've made the vow to stay in material life, to be engaged in all sense gratification. You're determined not to give up your sense gratification, so you'll never become Krishna conscious. And so we have to let, we have to let go of the material world. How do we let go? Hold on to Krishna. You give up the all the maya and hold on to Krishna. You don't watch the Bolly, Bollywood movies or any other movies on Netflix or all the different things on the internet, and, but instead you just simply absorb yourself in Krishna consciousness. The, just controlling the mind, stay away from maya. And gradually the mind will become quiet. Because we have the habit, because we had the habit before becoming devotees, we had the habit of so many bad things, so many, so much nonsense. So the mind is drawn by our conditioned nature, conditioned maybe even from the past life. And so our mind is drawn to this. We have to purify our mind from all that. You have to starve the mind. Stay away from it all. I only want Krishna. I only want Krishna's service. Krishna and Krishna's service. So if you hold, if you hold on to the material energy, then it will be different. <coughs> right? The one man was asking, he said, Guruji, how can I get free of my attachments? My 
have so many attachments. So the Guru said, I will tell you in a little while. So later that day, they heard the Guru shouting, Help! Let me go! Let me go! And went running. He saw his Guru. His Guru was holding a big tree. He was shouting, Help! Let me go! Let me go! <laughs> so he said, he said, he said Guru, Guruji, what's wrong? He said, I want to get free of the tree. He said, you're holding the tree. <coughs> so the Guru turned to him and said, yes, right. In the same way you want to get free of your attachments, you're holding to all the attachments. You're the one holding all the attachments. Nobody else is holding them. <laughs> you're holding, you have to let go. Then you can… So how do we let go? Hold on to Krishna, right? Hold on to Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. We have so many books, we have so many great <coughs> acharyas to speak to us, to teach us, to guide us. Hear from them all. Keep yourself busy in Krishna service. And that way the mind will become peaceful. Devotees are so busy, they have so many things to do. So many books to read, so many rounds to chant, so much service to do. We have no time for Maya. Right? Okay. Hey Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki Thank you.